Thanks uh, to all the distinguished speakers. Thanks to the chair. Um, I give now the word to Gilbert Teato. I'm not sure about the pronunciation. Is uh, the director of My Energy Luxembourg. Luxembourg will uh, act uh, for the presidency in the second part of the uh, next year and uh, will be the host of the new set plan conference. Please. Hello. Thank you, Mr. Chairman, and the pronunciation was uh, correct like that. My name is Gilbert Teato. I am from My Energy, the National Energy Agency of Luxembourg. And first of all, I would like to express my respect to the organizers of this uh, conference of this year's uh, of Set Plan 2014. I have been very interested in the organizational aspects of the conference, as uh, I am the head of the agency who is going to prepare under premises of the European Commission and the member states the Set Plan Conference 2015 in Luxembourg. I would also like to apologize for not being able to uh, join us today, the Luxembourg Ministry of Economy, who is among others in charge of the topics of energy and um, uh, research and innovation. In the context of uh, the organization of the Sandplan Conference, I was wondering what the role of Luxembourg in this context could be. I would like to point out three elements. First element, Luxembourg is an small country. Imagine 500,000 inhabitants in an area of 80 kilometers to 50 kilometers, so perhaps a small player in the European Union. But Luxembourg is in the heart of a greater region, and globing important parts of uh, Belgium, Germany, and France, and pushing the area up to 11 million of inhabitants. Apparently, our greater region is one of the best working greater regions throughout Europe, and there is an active and dynamic reflection process going in the direction of the energy transition topic. Second element, Luxembourg has a young and very fast-growing university going together with uh, growing research and innovation activities. There was a well-going construction sector, and Luxembourg is attracting many international investors. Um, I'm not speaking about tax ruling. Um, to accompany this, Luxembourg is moving intensely towards a dynamic ICT sector, aiming to become one of the places to be in this domain and uh, to provide excellent ICT conditions. Third element, speaking about energy, finally. Mm, yesterday, Mr. Nosia told us about energy dependency of the European Union. You remember 53% of the European energy needs to have to be imported. In Luxembourg, we only dream about such figures. <laughs> Even after accomplishing the ambitious targets of our renewable action plan, Luxembourg will still have to import 95% of its energy needs in 2020. So our most important activities in the domain of energy are efficiency, efficiency, and efficiency. These three elements lead me to the conclusion. For a reminder, there were greater region with the political will to progress in energy transition, growing R&I and ICT in this area, and energy efficiency. And the conclusion is, together with the will of the Luxembourg government to lift the energy transition to a political priority, the government aims to make of Luxembourg a pioneer in terms of energy efficiency within the greater region and to bring the Luxembourg economy progressively to the one of the most effective in terms of energy. So, unless the fact of being small, it looks that Luxembourg seems to be the perfect place to combine research, innovation and energy efficiency. I hope this will deploy an increased need for cooperation and that one on, the, on the road to reach our goals, uh, consumers will be strongly involved. I hope furthermore that this will be the perfect frame for next year's set plan conference and uh, together with the responsibilities of the European Commission and the respective member states, I therefore look forward to the presentation of set plans action plan next year. Thank you very much and see you in Luxembourg.
Thank you, Gilbert. Uh, now we are going to toward the end of this uh, today's conference, and uh, I'm asking uh, Dr. Silvia Velo, Under Secretary, Ministry of the Environment and Protection, Land and Sea of Italy, to come to the podium, and also Rudolf Strumeyer, Deputy Director General of the G Research and Innovation Repair Commission. Uh, please. Dr. Velo is uh, now very busy in these days because uh, uh, she is uh, in charge for uh, solving the, the problem of the international agreement to make the, the factory of steel in Piombino to survive. So I'm very happy that uh, she was able to find the time to, to, come, to come here and I thank her in person. Okay. Please. Yes. Thank you. Uh, Thank you very much. With, with great pleasure, I would like to discuss with you a series of notes for this conference so important, focused commitment to research and innovation of the European Union in the field of energy. I must first of all thank the organizers of the conference for giving body to this topic with a discussion so wide of participants. The first point that I would like to treat is linked to the need to combine the energy with the climate change. And for this reason, the need for a sustainable energy transition in Europe to a low carbon energy system. Uh, <clears throat> clearly, this step can be done if the target at various stages, 2020, 2030 and 2050, achieves objectives of reducing CO2 in Earth atmospheres to keep the overall concentration of this gas at the levels that allow a stabilization of the temperature around two, three uh, uh, Celsius degrees. Current technologies are not enough to achieve this stabilization. Only research and innovation can bring to this lap of reducing greenhouse gas emission. New technologies that should stand to the entire globe in energy production and in reducing the consumption. So, all together in Europe in the field of energy shall be able to join with the major contributors to global greenhouse gas emission. China, obviously, India, Brazil, South Africa, USA, etc. Countries relevant to reach a real maintaining stable the climate. Everything we do is for us to avoid disastrous consequences for our territory with emergencies that are becoming more frequent, leave no respite to the people and bring continuous tragedies and devastation. devastation. Why do we need, we need new technologies? It's not enough what we have as old technologies in the renewables, where they are insufficient to solve the problems that energy poses to the climate. The first element is the cost uh, of current technologies, the not competitive compared to some conventional fossil fuels. Some tools have finally achieved by itself the grid parity, but their availability to provide energies is not stable over time and cause a great looking on the adaptation of the network to this instability and will lead to new concept of dis dispatching. It has to passing to the smart grid or to a distributed system of, of small renewable energy production. Other sources are not mature on market competitiveness of the production, low efficiency, high cost of components or processes. 
Still, others do not have the acceptability of population and slow to achieve a competitive market having to be authorized and therefore show the necessity of, re of great reduction of convention conventional pollutants. Consider, for example, the case of the particulate matter reduction or have open problems in the safety of the process of, or in the pro production of waste. Here is where we have to establish research and innovation. Operative research and innovative technologies should be considered a priority for the European Union. A, par a priority, I think, strongest than CO2 emission market, emissions trading. As a list, for now, the emission trading, trading market has not found technological solutions, but always, but plays only with market rules built into the system with the bureaucracy which in recent years has been created in the European Union with some mistakes made by using the mechanism evil. Where has been found instead a certain con consensus that still led in the same way is in the NER uh, 300 program, new ent entrant reserve of 300 million tons of CO2 addressed the operative research on renewable energy sources, energy efficiency, and the carbon capture under storage. Um, the set plan will ca cater mainly to these ways, systematically addressing the problems outlined earlier of renewable alternative energy sources and new sources other than fossil fuels, able to shift energy production to other shores. While waiting, the transition must be covered by the system that produces the most effective current renewable sources av available and must be exploited to the maximum uh, yield resulting from the, re the reduction in fossil fuel consumption. Even here, the research and the innovation plays a fundamental role. We think of the new building materials, robotics, biotechnology, nanotechnology, new processes and consumption recovery, smart grids, building efficiency, etc. These are fields in which research can make a contribution on the path to high energy efficiency and synergy in close combination between, between energy efficiency and renewables. Energy efficiency is the uh, cornerstone of energy environment policy in the medium long term to reduce CO2. We want to push a change of perspective in the action of governance that shows some signs of discontinuity. A different role for programming, for programming both with respect to the goals and the coordination of, of action through First, an effort of collecting information, defining the potential of consumption reduction and cost efficiency analysis. The creation of a European coordinate, coordination room between the competent administration on the EU countries to manage, um, to manage in a coordinated manner the measures and support the binomial efficiency renewable resources with innovative technologies. Second, a different perspective to the critical economic and financial for efficiency and the renewable resources in innovative technologies. The right question is, how do we bring together investment towards new technology, uh, pri technologies, private financial flows it, it is well do not think only of incentive systems. Go instead find ways to exercise the greatest possible leverage 
on scarce public resources available uh, and the funds available from the European Union, Horizon 2020 and, and structural funds. The two concrete answers testifying that change of perspective are research and innovation on combination of renewable sources and energy efficiency, if supported financially, must be accompanied by a certain degree of employment. And the fi financial rules must be very beneficial by improving the operative as aspect, short and simplified proce proce procedures for funding, and enriching the offer to activate new, new private resources. Now I end with the living to search solutions, and I wish to see results within the next three or four, or four years on these issues with innovative technologies and ideas for a more certain future in the energy market at low carbon content. Thank you very much. Buonasera, Sottosecretario Velo, Signore e Signori. I'm very pleased to be here today and to have the opportunity to speak to you at this closing session of the SETPLAN Conference 2014. I would like to thank, on behalf of the European Commission, the Italian Presidency and INEA for the excellent work in delivering this successful event. As you all know, this year's conference falls at a crucial moment. As was highlighted over the last two days, important developments happened, are still happening, and will continue to happen at EU level in the energy sector in the years to come. The SET plan as the technology pillar of the EU's energy and climate policy has the imperative task of delivering new technologies and solutions which are vital if we are to achieve our objective to build a secure clean, affordable, and competitive energy system in Europe, and to help EU industry to thrive in the global marketplace. These two objectives are intrinsically linked because Europe will not be able to afford such an advanced energy system if this energy transition does not bring growth and jobs in Europe. This is also clearly recognized in the two flagship initiatives launched by Commission President Juncker and referred to during the opening of this conference, the Energy Union and the 315 billion investment plan. These two flagships also describe well the tense relation between the elements of the set plan. On the one hand, to achieve the objectives of the Energy Union, whilst at the same time delivering growth and jobs in Europe. In consequence, the SET plan must stimulate private investments in research innovation throughout Europe. If we look back, the SET plan did not sufficiently deliver on that. And this was following the trend of R&D investments in energy over the past years in Europe and across the world sharply shrinking, as you all know, in 2012. That industry, however, following the latest detailed analysis conducted by the Joint Research Center of a total investment in set plan technologies, accounted for 70%, member states 20%, and the European Commission for 10%, is relatively reassuring. Because this picture of the breakdown of the R&D investment made by the different sectors in Europe ensured that new energy technologies and solutions will reach the market and the citizens. But there are two interlinked downsides. The too low level of investments in absolute terms to have real impact and the fact 
that most of these investments have been done without coordination, whether between member states nor between member states and the Commission. The last aggravating the first element. This situation has as a consequence that industrial efforts are currently undertaken at national or global level. But focusing on national efforts, the opportunity to gain critical mass and to commercially compete is diminished substantially. And by focusing on global efforts, Europe is exposed to the volatility of international investments that are highly mobile in search of the best opportunities worldwide. Hence, there is both the risk of deindustrialization and technology dependence. The obvious solution here is to address the fragmentation that still exists at European level. I strongly believe that the development of EU-wide public-public-private partnerships could be a recipe for a strong industrial Europe. Pooling of resources, coordinating of actions, and the setting up of effective partnerships with industry is not anymore just an option, it's a must. For this to happen, it is indispensable to increase cooperation among member states, with the EU, and between all actors of the energy research and innovation landscape, from research to industry. This is the only way forward. Thanks to the efforts of more than 150 experts representing 40 organizations, we have now for the first time a document defining in a comprehensive way the research and innovation needs of the entire energy system in Europe, the integrated roadmap. On that basis and through the action plan, member states and the EU can build real cooperation within industrial initiatives across specific sectors to provide the critical mass of resources necessary for industry and the research community. Otherwise, we will not be able to deliver the innovative technologies and solutions that Europe needs to succeed in the transition of its energy system to a competitive low-carbon economy. At last year's set plan conference in Dublin, I stressed that we needed to use the crisis to consolidate our public resources and capacities across Europe to make the most of our research and innovation excellence. I also underlined that we must design ambitious programs to enable EU industry to lead the transition to a sustainable energy sector globally. Also, the global economy remains shaky. The Dawn Town has paused, as President Juncker stated. We must now take advantage of this pause and implement the lessons learned during the difficult times. And the lessons are, we need smarter investments, we must pool our resources, and we must consolidate our capacities. We cannot aim at anything less than joining forces. I'm aware that coordination and joint actions are not always an easy task, but leveraging investments is the only way to achieve greater collective impact. In this framework, the action plan will be a decisive step towards increased cooperation between member states and the EU. Ladies and gentlemen, I look forward to receiving the action plan. I'm confident that it will be an important initiative for Europe's research and innovation in the energy sector, guiding the community in the delivery of tangible results in the coming years, all in the spirit of the energy union. With this perspective, I look forward to celebrate our first common achievements in mobilizing additional investments necessary to achieve the energy union at next year's SET plan conference, and I count on you that we manage this.